Hello my dear friends, you are in the military service summary channel and this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night and there were a lot of very interesting updates. The Russians made another massive missile attack all over the entire Odessa region. The Russians were attacking the Ukrainians using the fleet, using the territory of Crimea, using the rocket launch systems and there was a very massive attack and uh, probably if you remember this is not the first wave of attack yesterday there was the first wave today it was the second wave of attack and as i understand yesterday when the russians were attacking the ukrainians in odessa they were making some kind of tests probably they were trying to understand the level of um, air defense system in that region and as i understand uh, the russians figure out that there were no air defense system at all in odessa or the ukraine air defense system were not able to do anything with the russian missiles and today uh, the russians increased the pressure and probably uh, attacked and destroyed everything they wanted the russian sources published the video of the launches of missiles from Crimea. On this video we see how the Russian fleet, uh, the Calibre carriers, were attacking the Odessa using the Calibre missiles. And on this video we see uh, maybe, maybe the same ship, maybe another ship from another angle was, was attacking Odessa. Uh, there were explosions all over the entire city. The sources are saying that uh, some industrial areas on the west were attacked. Some uh, some uh, uh, fuel depots on the south were attacked. The port itself, the main port on the central north part of Odessa was attacked. We got a lot of videos, for example, uh, some sources are saying that claims that on this video we see the attack against the Odessa port, the main port that the Ukrainians were using for the grain deal. And later we got, of course, more updates. People from Odessa started publishing a lot of videos. And on this video we can see the real hell that took place on Odessa during the previous night. Massive attack, a lot of explosions, uh, as you can see a person wanted to even to hide. A lot of explosions all over the entire Odessa, the port, the military bases, the production centers, industrial areas, everything was under Russian attack. And as you can see there were no air defense system from the Ukrainian side at all no air defense so as i understand if uh, the ukrainians uh, won't are not able to evacuate the military forces military bases industrial areas from the settlement during the day the next night we are going to see another wave of attack and the russians will complete their mission and they will clear odessa region from any military presence in this area uh, f the Ukrainians during the night uh, tried to somehow to s fix the situation and they made their own counter-attack using Storm Shadow missiles. First there were uh, opinion uh, from the Russian military expert that maybe the Ukrainians were using Grom-2 missile but later more and more military experts confirmed that probably that was attack of Storm Shadow. Uh, the Ukrainians destroyed the Russian ammo depot, very big ammo depot that located on the western eastern part of Crimea and the uh, local authorities of Crimea announced about evacuation of three settlements in the vicinity of this ammo depot. Probably he was talking about Tavrida, Kosovka, Evazovsk and probably Krinchakin. These uh, th uh, four cities is about to com for complete evacuation and the population of this region is around 2,000 people. Uh, this morning when the sun uh, comes, when the sun, sun arrives, uh, the our Russian sources published more videos from this area. As you can see, the explosions continue, and there are still explosions. So it will be it will take a lot of time. Probably there was the the most the biggest ammo depot on the territory of Crimea, and this is the results of the explosions. As you can see, a very big territory is covered with the fog of explosions as a result of um, explosions of ammo depot. So the massive missile exchange, and probably the Russians will continue. Now let's move to the ground. Uh, the special operation either by the Russians and the Ukrainians continue on the territory of Dnipro River in the vicinity of Antonov Bridge. The Russians published very interesting video how they were attacking uh, the, bo the Ukrainian boats that the Ukrainians were using for rotation process in the vicinity of Antonov Bridge and the, on the Russian side, let's say, of Dnipro River. As you can see, as a result of that attack, another boat, Ukrainian boat, was destroyed probably with the personnel inside of the boat. 
We haven't received any updates from Petihatki area during the night. We got fresh videos from Bradley Square. Uh, the Russians continue attacking the Ukrainians and their armored vehicles in their flanks on the north of Rabotina. Uh, one more time, this confirms our theory that Ukrainians need to improve to develop their bridgehead on the western side of this area of the main supply road that Ukrainians use for, uh, for moving forces in the direction of Rabotina. And this situation uh, for will force the Ukrainians to pay a lot of attention and to send more forces to attack the Russians in this area trying to develop and to create secure pass, secure road for their forces that goes from Novodanilovka in the direction of Rabotina. During the previous night of the this night of the local time the Ukrainians made another massive attack uh, in direction of uh, Staromayorska. For these purposes, the Ukrainians were using a lot of armored vehicles, infantry, personnel. The Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian forces on their way in direction of that settlement, and the Russians started bombing and shelling this territory, this bridgehead, using all types of weapons they have. As a result of those attacks, a lot of armored vehicles were destroyed, Ukrainian armored vehicles were destroyed, infantry were forced to step back, to stretch, and to hide among the forest lines and the brushes. Uh, later, most of the Ukrainians were forced to leave this territory and some of them were evacuated. After that operation the Russians uh, started hunting and checking the left Ukrainian equipment and for example in this video we see how the Russians managed to find another Ukrainian armored vehicle uh, that was left by the Ukrainians and they destroyed that armored vehicle using uh, a drone or at least they damaged this armored vehicle uh, because the Russians understand that they also don't have possibilities to capture this armored vehicle so they decided to destroy it uh, and not to allow the Ukrainians to get this vehicle back. The Ukrainians published the video of artillery preparation before that that uh, night are um, offensive operation. They bombed uh, the, Ukraine, the Russian ammo depot and artillery positions, and probably another Gowitz was destroyed that the Russians were using for supporting uh, their forces in uh, in uh, on the brim of tactical bridgehead. Uh, we got a very interesting video from Ugledar. We haven't received such uh, interesting and big pictures from this settlement for a very long time with such a big quality. As you can see, the Russians continue bombing and shelling this settlement using fab, um, gr uh, fab bombs. But uh, for now, yet the Russians haven't made any attempt to storm the settlement anymore. So it's small operational pause and the Russians are trying just to hunt and to destroy the game positions. Now we are getting to the most interesting part of uh, Donetsk front line. Uh, according to my opinion, maybe because of this is something new, we are going to talk about the coal mine uh, in the vicinity of Marienka and Krasnogorovka. As we discussed, the Russians during the starting on the 16th of July made a uh, very interesting offensive operation. As a result of that attack, the Russians managed to bypass the fields and to capture uh, this uh, coal mine, this stronghold. After that, the Ukrainians made a lot of attempts to return the settlement back. They were bombing, shelling this area using grenades, and we saw a lot of videos about that. And we discussed that the Russians need to hold this territory for a few days. They need to connect this stronghold with the mainland, and somehow they need just to survive there as long as possible. And this night, the Russians sent another raid reinforcements and more reserves to this area as you can see there are a lot of roads the first the first two roads a little bit on the bottom of the video is the first roads that the russians were using to attack uh, the settlement during the first days of offensive operation and currently we see that the Russians are sending some reserves and reinforcement to hold this area. As you can see in the video, the Ukrainians attacked one of the personal carrier, but the personal carrier had, addi had additional munition, additional shells on the top and as you can see that uh, helped uh, this armored vehicle to survive and to save the personnel inside of this armored vehicle. As a result of that landing operation, we see that the Russians sent a platoon of, of uh, forces, platoon of uh, troopers, maybe this was some kind of rotation. They managed to enter the stronghold to gather positions and basically the Russians still control this area. And the most important question, whether the Russians started creation, some kind of safe road between uh, mainland and this coal mine somewhere in the west, on the east or the south, to connect this territory and to have a better and more secure way to supply and support uh, this area with the Russian forces. 
Now we are moving to the north, we are going to Avdiivka. After a small operational pause, the Ukrainians restarted their shelling and artillery preparation in the, in the area between Visola and Kamyanka. Uh, as we know, the, the, during the previous week there were very fierce fighting, mainly from the Ukrainian side. They made a lot of attempts to attack the Russian positions, trying to develop their bridgehead and trying to reduce the pressure on the north of Avdiivka. Basically, they were trying to avoid or uh, prevent uh, any encirclement, at least operational encirclement of this area. So currently the Ukrainians launched another artillery preparation, so within the next 48 hours we expect another attempt from the Ukrainian side to attack in the direction of Isola, Kamyanka, Krasnogorovka and so on. Uh, also we got very interesting video from Konstantinovka, at least this is the, uh, let's say, the first uh, normal confirmation, video confirmation of the first massive usage of class shells from the Russian side. At least the author of this that this video con uh, claims that the Russians on this video we see the usage of the Russians cluster shells against the Ukrainian position. Uh, the damage that the Russians managed to deal to this area is significant. A lot of armored vehicles, lots of Ukrainian personnel, a lot of forces were destroyed, killed during just one attack. The thing is that Ukrainians didn't expect that the Russians be, um, uh, would use the, uh, the cluster shells and uh, but uh, because of the Ukrainians started using them first, the Russians just found the better place to use and they attacked the Ukrainian positions when the Ukrainians uh, weren't expected any uh, danger or any attack from the Russian side. The losses from of the Ukrainians are very heavy. Now we are coming to Klishevka. The Russian military expert blogger Rib reported that as a result of, of storming operation of 3rd and 5th Assault Brigade, 5th Assault Brigade, this is uh, 3rd Assault Brigade, the Ukrainians managed to capture the northern fortification, the northern stronghold of uh, Klishevka. And basically, according to Rib, the Ukrainians managed to develop their bridgehead in this area, at least like this. There were no updates uh, about the forest that located on the west of Klishevk about this area. There were no updates whether the Russians were forced to leave or the Ukrainians were able to capture. But when talking about this hill, about this stronghold, currently this area is under complete Ukrainian control. So the Ukrainians continue pressure and the fightings and intensifying of factions still in this area very heavy. Now let's move to the northern flank of Bakhmut, of Artyomovs. The Ukrainians made currently, they're also activated in this area. The Ukrainians trying to attack in direction of uh, these forest lines and direction of the Bow Vasilivka from Grigoryevka, trying to force the Russians to step back and to secure their flanks before the next waves of attack in direction of Birkhovka and Yahidne. And today the Ukrainians published the video of another attempt of storming Russian positions in the vicinity of Dubov Vasilivka. Uh, this video is geolocated. For those purposes, the Ukrainians were using uh, four tanks, uh, four armored vehicles, two tanks, and two personal carriers. And the Russian Ukrainians are saying that they managed to kill a lot of uh, Russian positions along the forest line, along the trenches. And that, as a result of that attack, just one. Soldiers survived, the Russian soldiers survived, but he managed to uh, provide the necessary information for the Russian artillery system, artillery forces, and after that the Russians started bombing and shelling this territory heavily. The Ukrainians spent their time for nothing, they spent a lot of time, they stuck in this area and the Russians started bombing and basically the Russians destroyed everything in this area and just two armored vehicles were able to evacuate, one tank and one personal carrier. After that, the personal carrier returned back and the Ukrainians started landing operation. Uh, with this one, there's personal carrier, they started landing operation, a lot of the entire platoon. Uh, oh, this is the Russian soldier who survived as a result of the Ukrainian attack. Now the Ukrainians landed and started clearing and storming these trenches, but one more time, the Ukrainians spent too much time for that operation. They were too slowly and the Russians managed to call the reinforcements and in the end of this video we see how the Russian reinforcements uh, have arrived and the reinforcements start attacking the Ukrainians and basically the Ukrainians were defeated. This video confirms that the Russians saved control over these uh, salient 
Poland in front of Grigoryevka, between Grigoryevka and Orechov Vasilevka. Now we're moving to the north, to, um, to Taretsk, to Taretsk salient. The Russians continue developing their bridgehead. Basically, the Russians um, um, changed their state now. They're in defense state. They're not uh, planning to attack uh, today, maybe at least. They need to make some regrouping. They need to dig deeper on this bridgehead to prepare because further on, the Ukrainians managed to move some reserves, reinforcements, and the Russian sources are saying that Ukrainians have redeployed in this area the reserves that the Ukrainians were planning to use in Bakhmut to help the Ukrainians uh, in a uh, cliché of offensive operation. The Ukrainians continue regrouping in this area. Of course, they understand the risks of this area and probably very soon, maybe even today, they will make more attempts to attack Russian positions on the salient. And the question is whether the Russians are able to hold the pressure. The Russians continue their defense, currently defense operation in the vicinity of Karamzinovka. After, after the Russians managed to create their bridgehead on this side of Zheribets River, during all these days the Russians uh, were in defense state. It was like some kind of encirclement defense. The Ukrainians made a lot of attempts to attack the, uh, the Russians in this area and to force them to step back. All those attempts from the Ukrainian side was, were repelled by the Russians and uh, currently the Russians are sending more and more reserves and the Russians are doing a very interesting and very powerful artillery um, job on the western side of this bridgehead trying to attack and to destroy the upcoming Ukrainian reserves. Uh, the Ukrainians also published, um, the Russian sources reported that during the previous days they managed to s develop their bridgehead in the vicinity of Liman Pierva significantly. Sinkovka still remains under Ukraine control or at least in the gray zone. The Russians attacks in this area, but uh, the Ukrainians also reported that they have moved a lot of reserves in this area as well, mainly of a 14th mechanized brigade. And you know that Kupin's front line, the most, the biggest problem with Kupin's front line from Ukrainian side is that uh, there are uh, brigades that are here on this bridge that have been here for a very long time and without any rotation and so on. And when talking about Zaporozhye, Bakhmut, Artyomovsk, most of those for, uh, old forces were replaced by the newly created brigades. But when talking about Kupinsk, there is just one newly created brigade, 88th mechanized brigade. But uh, so the Ukrainians have a lot of problems with the personnel, with their spirit, and they're willing to fight. And the Russians have rotated. And their forces in this area currently they're pushing and mainly uh, the Ukrainians try to hold and slow down the Russians with the forces of 103rd Territory Defense Brigade which is not so professional in comparison with the newly created brigades Ukrainian and uh, in comparison with the Russian forces who push and increase the pressure in this area. So we'll see and we'll follow this situation as well. And that's it for this short video military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.